Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. I'm here with my yearly list of the 30 best horror films of the year. I remember last year I said, you know, in 2016 I struggled to find 15 titles for that list. And last year I said I was a bit easier to find titles because I watched so many movies. This year I had to limit myself to 30 because I watched so many fucking movies and a decent amount of them were... Uh, worthy of being mentioned. So, uh, yeah, basically, um, this is th the 30 best horror films I saw this year. I th and, um, you know, it's going to be separated in two parts, just like last year. Uh, going to try and keep these speaking segments pretty short because, holy hell, I do I not want to make it, you know, two 40 minute long videos. So, Essentially, best horror films, 30 of the best horror films from 2018. Um, I'm counting movies that had their wide release in 2018 or their video on demand or digital release in 2018 uh, to where it is accessible to just about everybody. Or if I got um, maybe like a screener copy of a movie or something like that, then I will count those as well. But uh, yeah, that's essentially the criteria. Let's just dive right into this fucking thing. You know, a few years ago when Unfriended came out, I was like, man, this has got to be the worst fucking horror movie idea I've ever seen. Then I saw it, and uh, I actually kind of liked it. I thought it was pretty entertaining for how awful it was. And never would I have thought that the sequel to it would make my best of the year list, but here we are at the number 30 spot with Unfriended Dark Web. Holy hell, uh, was this an unexpected hit. Now, this isn't on the list necessarily because it's good, because this movie is god-awful. It's on this list because it is one of the most legitimately entertaining mainstream horror movies I've seen in a very long time. It, is, it was legitimately funny and just hilariously awful all the way through. Very similar to um, last year's uh, wish Upon, how that movie it was one that I saw the ads for, and I'm like, this is gonna be hot fucking garbage. There's no way this is gonna be good. And it turned out to be actually pretty good. Um, essentially, similar plot to the first Unfriended movie, except this time it's about a guy who steals somebody's laptop. Turns out this person has connections to the deep web and stuff like that. And, um, y yeah, essentially hackers... Um, kind of hack into the computer and, to, and into his friend's computers while they're on Skype and kind of k kills them off one by one. Uh, specifically, one person gets killed by by by, uh, by swatting. The, 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 the fucking people on the dark web swat, swat this guy and he ends up getting killed. Um, and it's, it's hilarious and how fucking awful it is. And they completely just kind of abandon the supernatural aspect of the first movie, um, because I think they realized how fucking stupid it was, so as a result, you have this jumbled mess of trying to do, like, a serious, kind of deep web-based horror thriller film similar to, like, The Den, for example, except it's nowhere near as good as The Den, and The Den, in retrospect, is not a very good movie anyway, but yeah, the number 30 spot goes to Unfriended Dark Web. This director, his his movie from last year made it onto last year's list, and his film from this year makes it onto this year's list. I'm talking about the newest short film from director James Bell. I'm talking about The Bliss. Now, now if there's something you got to know about James Bell's movies going in, is that they're far from perfect, and in fact, they're actually kind of bad. But there's something about them, the editing, the style, the gore, the music, the atmosphere, the sound design of these movies are done in a way that I haven't seen done in a movie in, in probably ever, honestly. They're not necessarily good movies, but they're very, very interesting, and they 
give off a very, very uncomfortable, creepy vibe. I can't really give much of a plot to this movie because it's really just 30 minutes of surreal gore involving an old man in a wheelchair. So, um, yeah, if you're a fan of James Bell, check it out. If his movies, um, I would recommend doing some research into them. Uh, if his movies sound, sound interesting to you, um, then I would recommend checking out some of his movies. Uh, maybe not this one. This is one of his weaker ones, but it, it was still a very interesting movie that came out this year that I uh, liked quite a bit. The 28th spot goes to the film by Ron Bonk, House Shark. Now, uh, this is a movie um, that I was I was really interested in seeing because uh, I'm actually friends with Ron Bonk, Ron Bonk on Facebook. He's a very nice guy. Um, yeah, uh, essentially I rented this movie um, because I had been interested in seeing it. And I figured that if this idea, if this idea would have been done by like a sci, by like sci-fi, this would have been awful and butchered. Thankfully, it's done by a director who knows how to do tongue-in-cheek movies. As a result, you get this movie essentially about a new breed of shark that lives inside the walls of houses, and it it, it essentially um, kind of forces this guy to leave his home and he tries to he gets like an expert on this new breed of shark as well as a professional shark hunter um to stake out the house with him and try and fight this house shark the shark itself is is a very cheap looking kind of styrofoam um silicone like prop it's 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 a really cheap looking puppet and it's very entertaining. Uh, the characters are rather interesting, uh, despite the, this movie being called House Shark. Uh, one of the characters is even doing like an impersonation of Richard Nixon while drunk, and that's his entire character. It's kind of awful but hilarious. It's a very self aware and goofy. It knows it's very stupid, and that self awareness can kind of shoot it can kind of result in the movie shooting itself in the foot because it definitely does sometimes there's some moments where it does get a bit um a bit bit cringeworthy but i think overall uh that house shark is actually pretty fun and entertaining for what it is it uh it knows it it knows it's stupid and it doesn't try to take itself too seriously and um like, almost all the effects are practical, including the gore and the monster effects, which is very, very cool. Uh, so, yeah, at the 28th spot is House Shark. At the 27th spot, we have Terrifier. Now, this movie uh, was one that I had heard about years and years ago as it being a spinoff of... Uh, from the uh, anthology film All Hallows Eve, which is a pretty bad movie, honestly. Uh, it's not very good, but it, it was still, you know, I still think it's pretty entertaining. And uh, I heard that the murderous clown character was getting his own spinoff film, and I was very, very interested in seeing where that would go exactly. And, yeah, um, it, it went places. This is a movie that I actually covered on my channel, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, and I'm just going to go say, I'm just going to say, watch that review, um, but essentially, it, this is just a really gory, uh, explicit, out there kind of slasher film, and I very much enjoyed it, and that is why it is uh, featured on the list. At the 26th spot on the list, we have Ghost Stories. Now, this was an anthology film, I think from the UK, um, from this year, that I had heard some things about, um, and I had heard some very, very mixed things about the movie. I, I had specifically heard that this, this movie was actually just flat out really awful. And I've got to say, if you're going to watch this movie, you have to go in knowing a few things. One of which is that 
each segment of the film, which this film is essentially about a guy who debunks uh, kind of hauntings and ghosts and stories about ghosts and stuff, and he is given three cases um, where these people, where, um, you know, they can't really prove that there's not a ghost involved. And essentially these three cases make up the segments of the film, and yeah, um, the segments don't really have much closure to them, because they just kind of consist of the guy meeting the person who had the experience and them telling the story of it, and then their story of what happened to them is the segment, and there's no real closure to it, and that's a big problem I heard. So just know going in that this movie does not have much in the ways of closure for the segments, they're mainly just short, spooky little segments. That being said, I, th I watched this movie, and at first I was like, man, this is pretty interesting. I got a little into it, and I was like, mm, you know, I don't know, I don't know, if we're, I don't know if I like where this is going. Then I got to the ending, and I was like, yeah, you know what? That was actually a pretty cool little flick. Uh, yeah, for me to explain why I I really enjoyed it is actually a spoiler for the movie, so I'm going to not spoil the movie and just say uh, that I recommend Ghost Stories. I think it's I think it is a pretty fun little movie uh, as long as you know what you're getting into. Up next on the list is Halloween. This was a movie a lot of people had hype for. I wasn't really that hyped for it. Um, I was offered free tickets by my cousin, and I was like, you know what? I will go. And I went to see it. Uh, I did a very long, like nearly 28 minute long video um, on my thoughts on this movie. So I'm just gonna, again, send you that way. Go watch that if you really want to know my thoughts. Keep in mind that the only, only like the first five, 10 minutes of the video um, is, is the actual review, and the rest of it is me talking about spoiler stuff, but still. Essentially, this is the official follow-up sequel to the original John Carpenter film. Now, all of the other sequels are considered to be non-canon and alternate stories, um, alternate versions of where the story could have gone, and now it is specifically this is the actual sequel. And um, the reason this entry is so high up on the list is, is because... It's not really that good, uh, I think. I think it's, I guess, a worthy ending to the series if it's going to be the final chapter. But I still kind of feel like there's not much going on. Um, for me to really explain it, I'd have to get into spoilers. So, either way, the new Halloween 2018, um, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the 25 spot. Up next on the list at the 24 spot, we got You Might Be the Killer. This is a rather interesting kind of slasher comedy, um, very similar to, like, The Final Girls, which was one from a few years ago that got some uh, good coverage, and that's a movie that I quite like. I would definitely compare this movie quite a bit to The Final Girls. Um, it's, it's a very self-aware kind of slasher parody. Uh, it's essentially about this guy who calls his friend who is into horror movies after he um, finds himself, you know, at a summer camp and there's a maniac on the loose killing people. And the movie kind of devolves from there and he tries to talk to his friend about what's going on. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's violent, um, it's funny, it's goofy, uh, but I found it legitimately entertaining all the way through. I don't really have much to, else to say about it other than I thought it was pretty good. Um, I would definitely recommend it. It's on uh, the streaming service Shudder if you want to check it out. It's on there. Uh, it's exclusively on there, mind you. So yeah, that's the only way you can check it out. Um, I think there might be a Blu-ray DVD release coming soon, though. So yeah, that's uh, You Might Be the Killer at 24. At 23, we have the uh, adult drama horror film Portraits of Andrea Palmer, and this is another one I covered on my channel, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much. Essentially, this is a uh, pornographic horror film to an extent uh, about a woman, Andrea Palmer, who is a cam girl, and after she insults her audience, 
she is offered a job in LA. She moves there only to find out that it was a prank by one of her viewers and things go downhill from there essentially. Uh, yeah, if you want to really know my full thoughts on this movie, check out the review, but I actually quite like this movie. Um, it's, it's definitely not for everybody though. <laughs> Up next, we got the French, I think, revenge film, um, Revenge. This is a movie that a lot of people seem to be, like, really praising and claiming it's this absolutely amazing feminist film, when in all honesty, it's just kind of a stylish revenge, violent revenge thriller, which there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. I, I like the movie. It's pretty good. But I think maybe it's getting a little too much credit. And, um, because the movie is, is, isn't anything too amazing, it isn't anything that hasn't been done before, and it's also just very convoluted. But, um, if you're willing to look past convolutedness and, uh, kind of fake, I don't want to say fake artsiness, but definitely, like, fake smart kind of shit, fake deep, I guess, um, you know, the fake deep aspects of the movie, it's a pretty good action revenge horror thriller kind of movie very violent and colorful um i quite liked it you, you got to turn off your brain for it but i liked it still i would rec i would definitely recommend it it is on again another one on the streaming service shutter at 21 we have the netflix original film cam this is the second movie on the list that is about a cam girl, which is kind of fucking bizarre. Um, this movie is is def is one that I really liked. Again, it's another example of a movie that is on this list that is like one I enjoyed quite a bit, but it is far from perfect. Um, but it had an it had its interesting ideas, and I think it does interesting things. Essentially, it is a movie about a cam girl who, after she, um, an attempt, in an attempt to get a bunch of, a, a good amount of subscribers, uh, she kind of has her account, like, hacked and stolen from her, so to speak, and she has a case of mistaken identity, uh, as a result. And this, this year was definitely a good year for Netflix, um, original horror movies, because there were, there were some, there are some ones that are featured on this list, this being one of them. Again, Netflix original, it's on Netflix streaming, if you want to watch it, that's where it is, and I would, I would recommend you check it out, it's, it's pretty, pretty good for what it is. At the number 20 spot, we have the movie Unsane. Now, this is a movie I had no expectations for going in. I kind of put it on, because I just found it on Amazon Prime. Um, and I was just like, you know what, this, this, this might be something. Um, I didn't have any expectations for it, and it turned out to be a pretty good psychological horror film. Um, essentially, Unsane is a psychological horror film about a woman who is being stalked, and she is obviously going through a lot of stress and trauma at the moment. Um, so she goes to see a doctor, and then... Uh, she somehow ends up getting signed into um, a psychiatric ward. And she claims that she didn't sign it herself into the psychiatric ward, but they have documents showing she did. And on top of that, one of the staff members looks like her stalker. Looks exactly like her stalker. This movie was shot on like an iPhone like 7 or something like that. Um, I don't know what the point of that gimmick was, because it makes the movie look cheap. And honestly, I think with the right camera work, this movie could legitimately be great. Because I think that plot and, like, acting and writing-wise, the movie's pretty good. Um, it's, it's mainly the visual aspect of it, uh, that drags it down quite a bit. But still, this was definitely, um, a, a hidden gem from this year. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was, so I would actually highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, it's unsane. At 19, we have the new movie from the directors of Turbo Kid, Summer of 84. This is a movie that's more of a kind of 
dark comedy um, thriller mystery film than it is a horror film. It becomes a horror film towards the last, like, 15, 20 minutes. But essentially, this is a kind of nostalgic throwback 80s movie trying to do a kind of Goonies-ish thing. Um, essentially about a bunch of uh, kind of teenage kids in this suburban neighborhood and they suspect that their neighbor who is a police officer is a serial killer. It is um, a pretty good movie overall. Uh, the writing is, is a problem that I myself and a lot of other people have with it because the writing... Um, these 15 year old boys are just kind of going around talking about sex constantly and I feel like that is that that is equally like um, unrealistic and realistic because uh, look I was 15 once and I'm not gonna bullshit I was going around saying like oh yeah I fucked this chick fuck that chick like I said shit like that when I was 15 I talked about that shit like I knew what I was talking about when I was 15 and here I am I'm 21 now and I'm just like fuck I was I was fucking awful then but um yeah if you like you know stranger things I guess this is a, definitely a, a more adult ish version kind of of stranger things if you like it for example I would recommend this to you it's it's pretty good for uh again what it is it's it's good At the 18 spot, we have Bad Samaritan, featuring David Tennant. This is a um, kind of crime thriller horror film, uh, essentially about this guy, and he, uh, him and his friend work as valets at a restaurant, and they break into people's houses uh, when they take their cars to go park them and steal things. And one night, one of them ends up breaking into this guy's house, and he finds a woman tied to a chair, horribly beaten. Um, yeah, this this movie is uh, kind of intense. It's definitely a pretty good, interesting, psychological kind of thriller horror film. Um, it goes places that I, I didn't expect it to go, and... Uh, it, while there are a lot of movies like this that exist, I found myself very, very interested in this one, very captivated by it, and, uh, yeah. Uh, Dave Tennant does a really good job as the fucking kidnapper guy. He's, he's fucking creepy as hell in this movie. I quite like this movie. Very much worth checking out. I had not really heard, uh, too much about this movie, and then, uh, I just kind of found it on Amazon Prime Streaming and watched it, and yeah, this is actually a pretty good one. Bad Samaritan. This is... This is, this is definitely one from this year I can recommend, but then again, I'd recommend every movie on this list, pretty much. At 17, we have the Netflix original film, The Ritual. This is one I watched uh, somewhat decently early on in the year, and I very much liked it. Um, the, the final act is a bit, eh, and there's some reveals that happen that are a bit shaky, but overall, I think the writing is pretty good. I think the relationships between characters are pretty good. And I think the acting is pretty good. Essentially, this is a movie about a group of guys. They go out um, on a hiking trip after their friend is murdered in a liquor store robbery. And while they're out in the woods, they start to see weird things hanging from the trees, weird symbols and there may or may not be somebody or something stalking them is, is all I'm really gonna say about this movie it's kinda like uh, kinda like the Blair Witch Project except not as um, consistently creepy but still very well done I enjoyed this movie quite a bit on Netflix would definitely recommend it it's directed by the guy who did the segment in the first VHS movie with the demon chick and that is like the best segment in that movie so you know that's that's a plus at 16 we got uh apostle this is from the director of the raid and the raid 2 uh, i'll be completely honest i don't really like the raid movies uh, i don't want to really get into the reasons why i don't like these movies but essentially, I just think that they're a little too 
uh, over the top for how serious you want to take them, and I also think that the use of CG blood and gore in the movie is, is very disingenuine when you're trying to have a movie that's very violent and visceral and action-packed. But this is the director's first kind of foray into the horror genre with um, this interesting take on kind of cult horror films. Uh, essentially, it is about this guy who I think he's looking for a missing girl. Um, something like that. I cannot remember exactly. But he's looking for this woman, and apparently she's been kidnapped by this cult. So he infiltrates the cult and ends up on the island with them and finds out some interesting things about this cult. And yeah, there are some pretty crazy moments in this movie. It's it's pretty well put together. I think the acting's pretty good. I think, I think it's a pretty well, well written movie. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think it's a pretty good movie all around. And uh, it has proven to me that this director can actually, you know, do something that I like. So that is a big plus. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. It's, it's like two hours long, so you know, if you're one of those people who doesn't like movies that are longer than an hour and 15 minutes, this is going to be a problem for you, but I still liked it quite a bit.